This is a video tutorial discussing the uh, ham D scale for depression. Which is a screening tool. Uh, a screening tool. This uh, talk is for uh, educational purposes only, not for self-diagnosis. The Hamilton Depression Rating Scale is to be administered by a healthcare professional. A counselor or a psychologist. Now, it's designed to rate the severity of depression in patients and uh, it contains 21 areas, but we actually use the first 17 to get a score. And we'll go over that later in the talk. So we're gonna go through each of the questions. The first question is asking the patient about depressed mood. Have they been gloomy? Have they been thinking negative about the future? Are they feeling sad, crying? What, how is their depressed mood? If they're not depressed at all, and they say it's absent, you mark it a zero. If they're a little bit sad, one. Ask them if, they're, if they ever cry. That's a good one. And if they say sometimes they cry, give mark it as a two. If it's a frequent crying or weeping, mark it as a three. Now, if they're extremely depressed, then you can mark this as a four. Question two is feelings of guilt. Once again, if there's nothing there, you mark it as a zero for absent. Now, if she feels she, is, she or she has let down uh, some people, you can mark it as a one. If they have ideas of guilt, a two. If they, uh, if they feel they need to get punished or they have delusions of guilt, then a three. Now, if they're having hallucinations of guilt, if they're actually uh, hearing voices or seeing things that uh, are telling them that they're guilty, then that's definitely a four. Suicide, number three is suicide, which is pretty self-explanatory. If they have attempts at suicide, mark it a four, nothing, a zero. Uh, I ask them if they have ideas, but they won't do it. I, I usually ask them why they don't do it at this point. Because while, while you're doing this, you can actually be doing a little bit of therapy counseling at the same time and trying to figure out more about why the patient is there in your office. If they feel life is not worth living, mark it a one. If they wish they were dead, but they wouldn't do it, that's a two. Three, suicide ideas, ask them what type of suicide ideas they're, they're, they're thinking of. Number four is insomnia, which uh, is, is actually divided into three parts. Number four question is asking about any difficulty in falling asleep. You mark it as either absent, occasional, or frequent. Asking about middle of the sleep. Are they, um, you know, waking up during the night? How many times during the night do they wake up? Do they have trouble going back to sleep in the night? What are they doing when they get up? So mark that as absent, occasional, or frequent. And the other one is, uh, if they're having waking in early hours of the morning, and they're unable to fall asleep again. So what happens is they wake up at three in the morning and then they can't go back to sleep. So you can mark that on a scale of zero, one, and two. Seven is work and interest. If they feel they have an incapacity in decision, then mark it as a one. If there's a loss of interest in hobbies, decreased social activities, a two. If they're actually seeing a, a decreased productivity, mark it a three. If they're unable to work completely, you mark it a four. Eight, retardation. Now, retardation is what we're talking about. Are they having slow thoughts, their speech, activity? Do they look like they're just standing there doing nothing? Uh, you can mark that as between zero and four. Zero for absent, one for slight, two for obvious. If the issue is very difficult because they're just, they're not coming out with the thoughts, Mark it a three. If they're completely just not doing anything and you think they're not even there, mark it a four. Nine is agitation, which is 
defined as restlessness associated with anxiety. So you can mark that as an absent, occasional, or frequent. 10 is considered psychic anxiety. Now this is more about tension or worrying about minor matters, all, all the way to apprehension and fears, and you mark that accordingly between zero and four. 11 is anxiety, but somatic, which means how does that anxiety translate into physical symptoms? So they get stomach aches, so they get palpitations, headaches, neck pains, back pains. I've seen all the way to people having you know, trouble seeing or having uh, an inability to talk completely, in which case you would give that a four. So if it's mild, it's a one, two for moderate, three for severe. Now, the other somatic symptoms you can get are gastrointestinal. So this is heavy feeling in the abdomen, loss of appetite, constipation. Mark that between absent, mild, and severe. Question 13 is somatic symptoms, which are more general. That's where the uh, loss of energy, you know, the fatigue, heaviness, you know, kind of generalized symptoms of, of heaviness or loss of energy. Mark it between absent, mild, and severe. Question 14 are genital symptoms. So this would be loss of libido, menstrual disturbances. They're going to be either absent, mild, or severe. Question 15 is hypochondriasis, which means are they being self-absorbed? Do they have a preoccupation with health? So if it's the only, it's extremely mild, a one. If it's not there, zero. And if it's just considered like delusions where they're actually thinking there's something wrong constantly and you cannot tell them that it's not right, that it's not true, then that would be a four. 16 is weight loss. Either they have weight loss, they have slight, or they have obvious or severe. You mark that accordingly. Now the last of the se first 17 questions is insight. How much are they insightful <coughs> of their condition? So this would be a zero for uh, no loss of insight. One would be partial. Two would be loss of insight. So that is 17 for insight. So now this is where you mark it. Uh, you, you mark up the numbers. If they're between 0 and 7, they're normal. 8 to 13, mild depression. 14 to 18, moderate depression. 19 to 22, severe depression. Over 23, very severe depression. And then I use this screening tool along with... Uh, whether they're suicidal, homicidal, hallucinations, delusions, their ability to uh, you know, dress themselves, their activities of daily living, are they safe to be alone at home, all that to decide whether this patient, if I decide he's depressed, is he someone that just needs some treatment and counseling, or is it someone that needs to be hospitalized? Because if he's totally suicidal and delusional and hallucinating, then uh, you may need to have him admitted into hospital and then that would need probably forming him which would be a separate uh, a separate talk if you guys are interested in us doing a talk on forming patients we can go over the different forms that have to be filled out now what's interesting with the ham d scale is that there's a few other other questions actually questions 18 to 21 18 is diurnal variations which is actually whether there's variations mild variations or severe variations question 19 is depersonalization or derealization feelings of unreality unre go from absent to incapacitated <laughs> 20 is paranoid symptoms, very important. Are they having suspicions, ideas of reference, delusions, hallucinations? These are important. Okay, now you know, sometimes you may be talking about depression, but you may, in the end, diagnose a bipolar depression if they're having manic episodes. Uh, but that would be a completely different type of screening tool that would be part of the counseling, the psychotherapy, where you're actually exploring the patient's symptoms. And this, is just a hand D scale. We're just looking to see whether they have symptoms of depression, signs and symptoms of depression. But number 20 is gives us an idea of how bad they are. Because you can have dep depression with psychosis. You can have psychosis, such as schizophrenia, or you can have even bipolar depression with psychosis. And then you have a whole bunch of other diagnoses that also include depression, mental illness, 
with psychosis and that would be a whole other video which would be on, on psychosis. Once again, if you want us to do that, please leave your comments below and let us know and we'll be happy to do a, a, a video on that. <clears throat> 21 will be obsessional symptoms. Obsessive thoughts, this would be in compliant with OCD patients. Obsessive compulsive patients, the opposite mild or severe. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is adapted from the actual article of the Journal of Neurology. Uh, the citation is on this slide. This is a very good screening tool. I like using this tool. Uh, most of the time when the patient comes in and you do the initial questions and interview, you'll get a pretty good idea that they're depressed or not depressed. But this gives me an idea of whether they are mildly depressed, moderately depressed, severely depressed. And then when I start the therapy, I start the medications, I start the counseling, um, I like to do this test again, maybe in about four to six weeks. We can look at, compare the numbers, see if they're actually getting better. It's a nice, objective way of doing that. And uh, it's a very nice uh, screening tool, and I recommend uh, you guys can uh, get this right off the internet, print it out, and uh, do it with your patients and clients. Thank you for watching. If you like more videos like this, please uh, subscribe below and uh, like us as well so we know that, uh, that the video is actually being of use. Thank you so much.